Hey there, so today I want to take a blast from the past and I want to show you exactly what was transpiring with Kig Vic, what it was meant to entail, and just how much damage this was meant to inflict. I mean, when we're talking about the scale of this thing, it is quite insane. Dozens of people were supposed to be damaged, but you know, you had one little incident where a person got listed on this by accident, a spreadsheet we're going to talk about. And also, of course, people drew a line in the sand and they said, no, this isn't going to happen. If you look at the dates on this too, 118, remember Kick Vic kicks off 117. All of this stuff has been happening behind the scenes before that. So when people tell you there's no conspiracy, yeah, there was no conspiracy indeed. You you didn't see all of these ANN workers going out and trying to compile lists. You didn't see all of these people pushing a narrative forward harder and harder so it would damage and on. You didn't see all of that stuff transpiring. All of that, it was imaginary. It was an illusion. It was just your favorite daydream. Before we hit this, though, if you like this kind of content, if you say to yourself, that umbrella guy, I love what you do. I love your channel. Well, first of all, thank you. I appreciate you. Second of all, make sure you're subbed. Hit that bell for daily notifications. Notifications. And if you want to go further, links are in the description. One of those links is to the case of the Littlest Umbrella and also the Goody Bird. There are two books involved in this. And my God, if you go out and you look at any of these books and they're launching, just look out something. Go out and look out uh, Comicsgate Nazi, Comicsgate Racist, Comicsgate Sexist. That's what they call independent creators who want a good publication. And they want professionals not to treat them like trash. That's what you get from mainstream industry. You get people that will go there and beyond. Look at where that stuff leads to, too. And every time you have deplatforming attempts, you have attack upon attack. It's so insane. It's almost nightmarishly surreal to certain levels. You'll see this stuff lead to two swatting attempts. You will see this lead to insane threats. I mean, like I say, do your own research there. <sighs> I think it'll overwhelm you to look at. Now, this project, of course, I mean, it is mine. I like it there. It is uh, all ages Lovecraftian uh, attempt here uh, for myself. And I wanted to give something to my daughter. All ages does not mean kids, just to say, but it means everyone, so everyone can enjoy it. There are two comics connected here, like I say. You know, you have that, and you have this comic book as well, so just make sure that you check everything out in there, you know, because I think you'll enjoy it. So, getting back to the article here. Now, this, as it says, is a spreadsheet of accused abusers, and it is attached to uh, the Me Too movement. Now, you know that attaching something to Me Too accusations, that pretty much is a way to burn down life and livelihood. That's all it takes. Accusations. No substantiation, just accusations. And this, this is built on the model of something else that was approached. Again, remember the date on it, what this was supposed to be. And remember, Kick Vic, it launches on the 17th. So you have this start out talking about the spreadsheet and the names of alleged abusers and harassers that end up on it as part of a Me Too movement in this niche community. Now they go on to list the number of people there. And as of that publication, it was at 34. I don't know if they added any more people after that because they had that little hiccup, which we'll talk about in a minute at the bottom of the article. Still, I mean, when you think about this, they are still talking about it. They are still asking you to search it out. So, I mean, when you look at it, they're still going out and they're still perpetuating the myth that 34 abusers are listed on this. Well, 34 with one question, of course. They did talk to the moderator of that as well. They just call them the moderator. And the moderator says, I'm not interested in pub punishing people there, of course. Conventions can punish. Law enforcement can punish. I'm not here to punish. I'm here to equip people who are likely to be victimized to arm themselves and be suspicious because fear keeps us safe in these situations. Fear Hmm. I seem to remember a certain movie going out and addressing that subject, fear. I believe they talked about it being the mind killer. Yeah, you know, fear is not healthy. In fact, fear mongering, this kind of trepidation, you know, to go into conventions and on, that will get people removed. That will make uh, places listen. But of course, there's no substantiation to it. Now, they talk about that following the, uh, the format of a crowdsourced Google spreadsheet, 
called Shitty Media Men that was uh, went viral in 2017. And it basically, you know, it goes out and it, it talks about whisper networks. Now, whisper networks are interesting because you hear about them in every single uh, single hobby or anything else that's out. You hear about this, whether it be entertainment, whether it be comic books and on. Well, we talked about them behind the scenes, but Hmm, interesting stuff there. One man on the list, you know, he uh, filed a $1.5 million defamation suit because of that stuff, too. Hmm, maybe you would think people would learn from that, you know? So, they note here, you know, when they started this, they, uh, in the beginning, they only wanted to create a place for women to share their stories of harassment and assault without uh, being needlessly discredited or judged discredited. Interesting word at throwing that out there, huh? Users, of course, are anonymous, so anyone can basically go out and attack anyone because users should be protected from their career or personal repercussions. Isn't that an amazing way of looking at that? You as a user, you should be protected from repercussions. Not uh, not the people that you're blaming. Now those people, it's a-okay. There were pitfalls. The document was indeed vulnerable to false accusations, a concern I took seriously. This document is only a collection of those and of course take it with a grain of salt. That's the thing. You know, they throw out a disclaimer. They tell you, hey, I'm not saying that. And then, of course, they let people go wild. That that is one of the ways that these type of people operate. They do that in everything. I've been looking at it through comic books, for example. They will go out and brand somebody a Nazi. They will brand somebody a racist, a sexist, a transphobe. Then when bad things happen after they push so far, then they throw up their hands and say, but I didn't do anything. I didn't do a thing out there. I just basically, you know, whip people up into a fervor. And then after they went out and did something horrible, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I just got tired of uh, seeing so many parallel accounts of these same predators. That moderator going back told them. I kept seeing people make call-out posts, but if they're being made on Twitter, they're just going to vanish into the ether because of time. Made on Facebook, they're not going to go outside of a really small circle. The convention community is nationwide. So you see the intent here what they're doing to put that together. All of this is based on is conjecture. No way to prove anything, but that it doesn't matter in any way, shape, or form because allegation is substantiation to people like this, you know? Then they talk. They continue on. I know we all want to be accepting because the reason we're together as a community is because we're rejected for our interests in other spheres of society. But at the same time, there are people who are just not safe. Yeah, when they talk about safety too, you know what I find interesting about that is they talk about things like uh, cosplay not being consent. They talk about the people out there, sexual abuse. What about this as a safety concern? What about people actually feeling that they can communicate, that you can buy a, uh, a invitation to go and have a picture with someone and, you know, later on you probably, uh, you know, you're not going to be accused of something. Or the people taking said picture, they're not going to be accused of something. Ten years down the road, you're not going to talk about bear hugs and how those are some type of P to the E to the D to the O fetish. Hmm. I don't think it's fair they continue to identify a problem and not identify a concrete solutions that are implementable by everyone. People blame the victims. Blame the cosplayer. Whoever was most drunk. It needs to be everybody's problem, not just the problem of the victim. Now, you notice that word there all the time. Victim. They already go out, and again, they give substantiation to allegation. That makes you a victim. Not a supposed victim. I mean, you're an alleged abuser, but they, they are an alleged victim. They are a victim. You see how semantics to this kind of stuff works. It's a dangerous, dangerous game in there. You see them continue on. A lot of cases of people referring to all sex with minors as a pedophilia. That's not technically correct. Also, a lot of people putting in descriptions of something that was grooming, but not use the word grooming. 
I want to be as accurate in language as possible. So, you know, they were going to actually label you in ways that, my God, I mean, when you think about that, yeah, very telling indeed. Now, they said there isn't a threshold for who is in, included in the spreadsheet. Someone with one allegation against them might find their name in it. There's probably more. It's just a matter of time. So they were wanting to dig up more people. About a third of the people on the list had multiple allegations against them. Then they talk about, well, this is what the low barrier does. They list, they call him someone who writes columns for ANN, but this is actually a founder of ANN. This guy here, he ends up on the list because, quote unquote, stalking. Now, when you go through that, I mean, you see how. Again, it doesn't matter about other people. Like a Vic Mignogna, it's listen and believe. But depending on who someone gets caught in there, hmm. Now this guy, of course, he is listed as the danger of doing something like that. No one else. No one else is listed as the danger of it. But this guy. Why? Because he's tied to media. He's tied to many of these people out here. The people who wanted to burn Vic Mignogna's life down, they didn't want to burn this guy down because, you know, friends. I mean, we saw the same thing with a certain Ron out there talking about Neil Kaplan. Yeah, same type of stuff. They talk about that, you know, the, uh, the bullying and on. They go through the, uh, the listing of that. Luckily, they say, though, here, you know, this person, Justin, luckily, I immediately identified the claim as being from my harasser, and a bunch of friends came to my defense. He tweeted at the moderator to tell them to remove it, but he says he didn't get a response. Someone he knew made contact, though, and his name was removed. So you see how that works there. Cronyism will get you removed from this, and that cronyism there, huh, that actually protects people. Again, you see how this stuff is working. You see how the, the brigading and the branding people something, that works. And these people, they do it with impunity. But they also, again, they stick up for the people that they like there. Now, he says that uh, while he is disheartened by the uh, current conversation around creeps and abusers at conventions, the spreadsheet, that's not a good idea. That's not a good idea at all. Why? Because there's no way to check that out. Now, other people, of course, they disagree with that. They think that the, uh, the spreadsheet might be good. You have some people that say, well, this is not good here. You know, it's intended to help. Intentions are good. But it continues to be a Band-Aid. Such a spreadsheet also implies that it's a victim's responsibility to look over the list and have knowledge of who predators are. And if the victim doesn't know, it's their fault. I mean, you don't see the problems that you're talking about with people actually having their lives ruined. But, yeah, I mean, you see how that goes. Here's another person, though, talking about how, hey, this uh, convention attendee thinks it's a good idea. I think it's good that toxic people are being exposed and hopefully flushed out. I hope it sticks and uh, the momentum keeps going. The momentum keeps going because we want to burn human beings down. Like I said, this is an insane thing to see. They use words, too, like a touchstone. You know, we've seen cultural touchstones referred to with marketing of movies. Well, this this is a moral touchstone of the weeb community. It, if you, of course, you don't identify with this kind of stuff, if you don't identify with the move, what does that say about you? What does that say? What does that do there? What does it put on the person that is actually being accused? And moreover, what was the plan going forward? You can see that in a lot of statements by certain people out there. Take Mars Girl, for example, talking about moving this stuff forward, saying that, you know, once we're past this person, hopefully we can continue. This was an idea that was going to be shopped around. But unfortunately for these people, you know, they ran into folks like, well, Ty Beard. They ran into folks within the community. They ran into motivated individuals out there that said this this is not going to be the form moving forward what we need is something different what we need is due process and of course even though you know basically people want to crucify you out there they want to destroy your reputation they want to sully you period they want to destroy your occupation still this can't be the way forward you cannot have people that can go out a levy accusation and that be the end all to it. People, they have 
to be able to go out and defend themselves. And well, the way that this stuff is setting up, it has become monstrous indeed. But anyway, I wanted to show you this because a lot of people, they don't know about it. They don't realize how big this thing was supposed to be. And, you know, there are all these names out there. Voice actors, you're warned. You were actually being listed. You folks, if you think, too, that you're above this, you think that just because of your identity, your gender, or what have you, that these people won't turn on you, they eat their own. They always eat their own. It's been one of the particularly fascinating things to watch time and again. These folks, they always consume one another. They always eat their own. And well, when you're looking at it, my God, I mean, when you look at the scope of this kind of thing, just with one person, what happened here, how people have had to fight back, what it took to fight back there, I think that says plenty. But anyhow, you tell me what you think about this stuff. So if you like this kind of content, make sure that you're subbed. Make sure you hit that bell for daily notifications and if you want to go further links are in the description one of those is the case of the littlest umbrella in demand currently two comic books here and all ages love crafty and tell also a satirization of the madness that came from comic books but basically also with a message we can circumvent gatekeepers we also have set up an etsy shop for prints and limited edition cards and on so go and check those out leave me uh, your thoughts on this stuff too i mean when you look back back at this. It's absolutely insane what was intended with this. We know exactly what would have happened. We actually know what will happen going forward too. Yeah, there's a lot of damage that can be done. But anyhow, leave your comments on that. And ending this, I want to thank you for participating in this. I want to thank you for empowering these endeavors. Without you, none of this stuff would work. These people, they keep forgetting that. And they're going to be reminded one day very soon. They'll want and wish that you were still there. But by then, it's too late. So anyway, I thank you. I appreciate you. And we'll be doing this again very soon. Thanks.